There we go. Hey, good morning, everyone. Welcome to our abbreviated worship service today. Really less of a worship service because I'm not going to sing for you and I'm not going to do all of the pomp and circumstance that is typical part of worship. We're just going to have a little family time together. You see, it's very casual. I just threw on a hat and we're in my kitchen. So you get a little sneak peek into our lives. Hopefully everything, all of the chaos, I shut the door over here. We'll see if you, if there are uh, crazy things running around, it's just part of our lives. So it's okay. I feel uh, we're, we've become quite accustomed to this worshiping online. So no, we'll see how it goes. I uh, want to, we'll begin with the word of prayer. And then we'll get into a little devotion on Moses as we continue our sermon series. We're going to look at a little bit. So if you have prayer requests, throw them in the comments and we'll uh, get them in our weekly email that'll go out uh, Tuesday this week, probably. Uh, but just a couple, well, one big reminder, you want to want to pray for Debbie Merritt. Uh, she was uh, taken to the ER yesterday. Uh, she and Scott spent the night last night at Duke, um, Duke Raleigh, and she's having some complications with their diabetes and facing some pretty serious surgery tomorrow. So we want to definitely pray for Debbie and for Scott since they're grieving in that way. Um, we've got a whole list of prayer requests on our on our email that we send out. I hope you pay attention to that and pray for people in that way. Uh, but, but let's pray together and then we'll get into a, a little bit of a scripture. Uh, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the day. We thank you for the uh, gift of technology where we can somewhat be together. Uh, we pray that you would uh, speak into our lives, whether it is a, a great awakening or an invitation, a call into the next step of the Christian life, or uh, just a sense of your presence, of your love. Um, you know exactly what we need and pray that we would re receive that today uh, into our living rooms, into our bedrooms, into wherever it is we'll be uh, worshiping today. Lord, we thank you for the day, for the gift of it, and it's in uh, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yeah, I think we made the right decision, uh, by the way. The road in front of my house looks great. I don't know what what your roads look like, but our backyard, the deck is all frozen over, the cars are frozen in. It's a, uh, I don't know, I'm a little disappointed. I was hoping for some snow, but... Anyway, it looks like this weekend we might get a little bit of snow. Let's see here. All right, so just to, basically what I did is I took my sermon and sort of cut it in half. So you get the Cliff Notes version of it. And I'm this is really weird. I've done devotions before to the computer, but never like a sermon. So this is really sort of weird. I don't know who's watching. I've got my notes pulled up. I don't know who's watching and I don't know who's... <laughs> No, but anyway, we'll get into it. So I wonder, so this is based on a question that uh, just stumbled into my mind after reading the scripture this, uh, this week for our sermon series. We're calling New Beginnings. We're looking at different stories from scripture, people who had new beginnings in their lives and you know, sort of overlaying it into our lives and just wondering what it might mean. And this uh, question popped into my mind, and I ran it by a few people, and it seemed seemed interesting. Wondering, wondering if there's a difference between running away, running away from something, and a new beginning. Now, is running away a new beginning? Is it a true new beginning, or is it I don't know, just running away? And we'll get into what the two look like, and you might suspect what the conclusion is going to be but anyway we're looking at the story of moses and i thought about reading the scripture but it's long and i just figured it might be boring so i was just gonna sort of hit the highlights of it not that scripture is boring but reading it to a computer screen is sort of strange so anyway so we get the story of Moses. Moses, we'll pick up sort of later in his life where Moses is a mess. If you want to read the beginning of his life, it's I think it's Exodus 2, and we're jumping in at the end of Exodus 2 and the beginning of Exodus 3. So Moses is this Hebrew boy who was taken up by 
uh, Pharaoh's daughter to raise him. And he apparently reached some sort of status as uh, we don't know what's going on, but he's certainly not treated as a Hebrew. So one day he's out and the, the Hebrews are enslaved by the Egyptians, you remember. Um, and one day he's out and comes across this uh, Egy Egyptian who is abusing, who's beating, who's uh, really being ugly to a Hebrew slave. Uh, and so Moses runs up to him and kills him and uh, takes him off and uh, thinks everything's okay because he's furious of the way he's treating his people. And then the next day Moses is out and the Hebrews are, they're two Hebrews that are fighting together on the job or whatever. And Moses says, why are you fighting with one another? You've got so much hardship, just chill out. And the Hebrews say, well, what are you going to do? You're going to kill us too, like you killed that Egyptian? And Moses freaks out, uh, and he hears that Pharaoh is after him to kill him. So what does Moses do? You know, he does the only thing that he knew how to do. He ran away. He ran away from his problems. You know, I suspect many of us have been there. You know, so desperate for a new beginning that we call it, or something which we're so afraid of that we run off. Uh, and we're looking for a new beginning, but actually what we're doing is just simply running away. All right, so put a little context to it. You're miserable in your job, and so you you go back to school or you get a different job. You're miserable in your marriage, and so you, what, you separate, you get a divorce, you move on. You found yourself in a medical condition. There's something going on with you, but you're sort of afraid of it, so you run away from the doctors, and you don't go to the doctor. Um yeah, you, know, you find yourself wanting to move homes because your neighbors are terrible. And, you know, it goes on and on. It's the source of so many books and movies and legends. You know, I just finished watching a Netflix show that is the, the main character. <clears throat> she lived a you know, life of promiscuity and wanted a new beginning. So she ran away, right? She changed her name. She started a new life she uh, but but you see and 17 years later though it came back to haunt you see like no matter it seems no matter how hard you run unless you're running in the right direction do you hear that unless you're running in the right direction it never works and i'm not just saying this because i watch too many netflix crime mystery dramas you know it's straight from scripture let's look at moses so Moses ran away from his problems, okay? And no judgment, like, of course, we, I'd do the same thing. Somebody's after to kill me, but he, he's running away, and he's running away. He created, and so he runs to Midian, and through this really weird series of events, he uh, <clears throat> meets a priest's daughter of Midian, and there were seven of them, and the priest is so impressed that Moses drew water for them that he gives one of his daughters to be married to any, it's a, I, it's an unusual, strange story. But anyway, Moses finds himself in a new life. Yeah, he's created a new life for himself. He's settled in and married. He has children. He's got a good life. There is nobody after him to kill him. He didn't have to worry with the double life of living as a Hebrew um, with Egyptian rearing. He could start over. We get every sense that he was happy. He had money. He had status. He had a good job. He had a good life. He was happy. Oh, presumably. I mean, surely. I mean, think about it. Surely he must have been haunted by his people's torture, their enslavement. You know, this is not just some far-off people. I mean, these are his brothers and sisters and potentially mom and dad and cousins you know it's not like these are his people that he knew that he lived with um you know can you really run away from something like that can you run away from that pain i wonder i wondered how long he he thought about it how often he thought about it how much of it consumed him i wonder how hard he had to fight it down um so i i wonder had he run away from god away from god's calling in his life or had he run toward god now, I think Moses can teach us a little about, about the difference between running away and actually experiencing a new beginning. Uh, during the season of Epiphany, we might call it an ep epiphany, running a new beginning. 
you know the and here's the like this is the the, the which could the thesis of the sermon here of the devotion here you have running away tries to forget the problem and experiencing a new beginning deals with finding God's calling in your life at a particular time. So running away, it tries to avoid avoid the problem. And New Beginnings deals with finding God's calling, God's will, God's presence, whatever you want to call it, in your life at this particular time. Uh, Moses misunderstood running away for a new beginning. and actually didn't receive his new beginning until uh, really even stranger interaction. This is the most famous part of Moses, you know, the burning bush where Moses is out tending his flock and he sees this on the famous mountain uh, that's called Horeb in the story, but it's Mount, Sin Mount Sinai is the same place where Moses will later receive the Ten Commandments. Then. Uh, but he sees this burning bush. It's not consumed, so he goes up to it, and there's an angel there, and the angel, I had to read this several times, the angel is there, but the angel never talks. It's just sort of eerily floating there, and God's voice is speaking to Moses, and you, you remember the story. He tells Moses what to do. He's going to go set his people free, but uh, God starts with, or the scripture starts with, it after a long time, and it says, after a long time, this happened. Yeah, you know, Moses hit, and this is, I think, interesting. Moses had been away for so long, perhaps he thought that running away had worked. Now, in the beginning, running away uh, feels like it works. You get away from the problem, you get away from whatever mess there was, but it seems like it always tends to come back to us, you know, like, I wouldn't call it running away, but I've had the chance for new beginnings a lot in my life, you know, like a, a new grade in school, or going to college, or going to seminary, or, or, you know, getting married, or starting different churches, working at different churches, you know, or during the summers, I've always worked at different camps, um, the, the summers of uh, college, and so, like, I have this constant opportunity to recreate myself, you know, be the person that I, I want to be. And, you know, like, what happens? Every time I just revert to the same old walls. Not that that's bad. It's just, you know, running away, it never works. It always catches up with you. It is in inevitable unless we're running in the right direction. You know, God never gives up on us. And God didn't give up on Moses either. You know, I wonder if new beginnings can only come from a word from God instead of our own intuition. You know, can we really deal with the hard places of life, with the places where, which we're tempted to run from without the power of God? Uh, new beginnings, I think, can only happen when we run toward God, receive God's purpose for our lives, and live into it. So... Uh, what does that look like you know, with Moses? It looks like a message from the burning bush. You know, unfortunately, we don't have too many burning bush experiences, but maybe, maybe you do. You know, seeking God in prayer, seeking God in relationships, and asking some trusted mentors of pouring over Scripture, of looking into what our you know church tradition teaches us they're looking into your own like what makes sense genuinely you know so look at like some of the examples i threw out you know rather than moving what if you you know you said moving well moving houses because your neighbors are terrible i mean what if you set down roots and really help develop a better neighborhood and really pour yourself into it you know? Rather than stepping out on your marriage, maybe you try counseling and look at yourself and make sure that it really isn't broken. You know, maybe rather than running away from, I don't know, whatever, I can't see you. I don't know what you're running away from, but I presume there's something in your lives that you want to run away from or that you're actively running away from. And, you know, some ways it may be good maybe it is god's will for you to run but are you running in the right direction you're running in the right direction now in god's time we're almost done let's see if i can wrap it up now in 
in God's time and by God's power. I think that's true. In God's time and in by God's power, we can can experience new beginnings. Uh, and new beginnings can only be clarified by God, I think. Now, not simply the the idea we have for new beginnings of running away, but true new beginnings where life clicks and we can experience the joy which God has created us to live into. Now, new beginnings, I think, is finding this mix between uh, the need in the world and our convictions and our calling. I think in New Beginnings is not always just one epiphany. I mean, it happens frequently. I don't know. So I am convinced that some of us probably need a new beginning today. Um, whether it's you or you know somebody in your life who maybe needs a new beginning. Um, some of us want to run. And I wonder how God might be inviting us to, you know, seek God and wonder in which direction God might have us run as a new beginning. Yeah, that's sort of where my mind has been this week uh, for, you know, for, for me and my life. You know, just because I'm a pastor doesn't mean I don't have spiritual struggles as well. Uh, but I also know and have talked with some of y'all. I know some of y'all are dealing with seeking new beginnings of God's direction in your life too. And it's my my prayer that God might give you a burning bush experience or or maybe through a family member or friend you might find this sense of clarity uh, that God is inviting you into a place. Yeah, I do pray for you. You know, pray that God would break into your lives and uh, call you more deeply into God's love and God's purpose. Because when we find purpose, we find joy. This in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I ask your God's blessings on you today. I pray that you stay safe. Give me a holler if you need anything. Not that I'm going to get out and drive, but I can find you some help. Uh, pray that you have a, a safe and warm and good afternoon. God's blessings to you all. Take care.